Welcome to this ANSYS how-to series video. ANSYS Mechanical is a user interface used for conducting all types of mechanical simulations, from statics to dynamics, from heat transfer to multi-physics and more. While the mechanical user interface is intuitive, understanding the design philosophy, overall window layout, as well as how to navigate will be valuable whether you're a new user or just coming back for a quick refresher on the user interface. We'll discover that the mechanical tree outline essentially controls everything contextually in the user interface, and therefore what you see depends on where we are in that tree outline. We'll introduce and explore the user interface via a simple mechanical simulation. Ready? Let's go. We are inside of ANSYS Workbench, which is the most common approach to opening mechanical. We'll use a simple static structural analysis as an example throughout this video. The material models have already been defined in the engineering data cell, and the geometry has already been imported via the geometry cell. Double click on the model cell to launch mechanical. You can also double click on the solution as well as the results, all will direct you to the mechanical interface. Now we have mechanical open. The interface is divided into several regions. The tree outline is on the left, the ribbon at the top, and currently the home tab is visible the details region on the lower left, the geometry window, and the status bar. We will see the meaning and function of each region as we build up the model and run the simulation. Each of these windows can be undocked and docked in a new location. Manage operation on the home tab allows us to show or hide various windows and workspaces as necessary, and we click reset layout to go back to the default layout. The tree outline is where all the model information is defined and shows the overall workflow. Depending on which object is highlighted, the context tab and details region and even the right mouse button menu options change correspondingly. There are some tabs that are always present on the ribbon, such as File, Home, Display, Selection, and the Automation tab. As the name suggests, these tabs have options that conduct important operations such as save and export the project, define units, change the display settings, change the selection mode, among many others. Now let's set up an actual model and run a simulation. We will walk through each object in the tree outline and help you get familiar with the mechanical UI navigation. Looking from the top of the tree outline to the bottom, we can see the objects needed to complete a simulation. First, we need the geometry to start with and we need to define materials for the geometry. You may have noticed some symbols in the tree outline. A question mark means there is information that needs to be defined, and a green check mark means the object is valid and up to date. A yellow lightning bolt means the object is invalid or non-existing. Now let's click on the solid body in the geometry. We notice the details region has changed. The corresponding details about the solid geometry are now listed here. We see that the material assignment is highlighted as yellow, which means information needs to be defined. So let's select a material for this geometry. Now we have assigned the aluminum alloy to the body, and we can see that the yellow highlight is gone and the symbol has become a green check mark. Repeat the material assignment procedure to convert all the question marks to green check marks. At the same time, you may have noticed the title on the context tab has changed. The context tab shows valid operations related to a highlighted object in the tree outline. So each time you click on the new object, the context tab will update. So if we now select geometry, we can see the context tab becomes geometry and it lists many geometry related options, such as insert a point mass, modify the element orientation, as well as many others. We can achieve a similar objective by right clicking on the geometry then selecting Insert. The Context tab and right-click on the object are interchangeable, and the two approaches we will use extensively to set up the model. Note that the window that pops up after right-click also depends on the object we're clicking. Let's move on to view the details about the aluminum alloy material. We can expand Materials and click on the aluminum alloy. The workspace now turns into a material view of the engineering data and it lists the data we defined for this material. For this chart plot, we can click on it and look at the detailed values. Like before, the details region also changes as we click on the aluminum alloy 
and now display a summary of the material properties. The mouse buttons allow us to easily interact with the model. The left button click enables us to select components of models such as a vertex, a face, etc. The middle mouse button allows us to rotate the model. We can click and hold the middle mouse button to rotate, and the red dot on the screen shows the rotation center. If we click outside the model to rotate, the rotation center is set at the geometry center. If we hold control key and hold the middle mouse button, we can pan the model around. Lastly, the right mouse button allows us to zoom into a region. To zoom out, we can press H to return to the home isometric view or press F7 or Z to zoom to selection. Alternatively, we can right click on the geometry window, then select zoom to fit. There are two other things on the geometry window, the ruler and the triad. The ruler shows the scale of the model and can be especially useful when we're assigning a mesh size or even checking the scale of our model, which would help us confirm we're using the proper size and units. The triad allows us to quickly navigate to a specific view. Let's move on with the flow. For coordinate systems, we can define additional local coordinate systems if needed, but here we'll just use the global coordinate system so nothing here needs to be changed. The next thing we see is connections. Expand it and we can see some contact region already defined. When there are multiple parts in the geometry that are close to each other, Mechanical will automatically assign bonded contact between them. For this simulation, we'll keep the default contact settings and assume all the parts are bonded together. Now let's mesh the model. Click on Mesh. In the Details window, let's define the mesh size. By already confirming the rough size of our model, we can now specify a reasonable mesh size. Right-click on Mesh, then choose Generate Mesh. Now we have assigned a material to our geometry and meshed it. Let's move on to define the analysis settings and assign boundary conditions, which are all done under the analysis environment branch. The analysis settings control very important solver configurations, such as large deflection and auto time stepping. To capture the large deflection, obtain more output result sets. Let's turn on large deflection and request at least 10 substeps. Now to insert a boundary condition, we can either right click on analysis settings static structural, or workspace. All three of these actions will provide us an insert button where we can select the boundary conditions we need. As always, the context tab also shows the available boundary conditions we can add. If we hover over a particular option, it provides a short description and we can push F1 to launch the help documentation to obtain more information. Now let's choose force. Select a hole of the brace to quickly add it to the geometry, we can simply click on this Apply Selection button and the selection information will be sent to the force scoping. The other icon allows us to select the parent body that this face belongs to. Change the force definition method to By Component and apply a force in the Y direction. The force vector is illustrated in the geometry window correspondingly. Also, notice the ramping of our force over our load step via the graph and the tabular data. To insert a fixed boundary condition, click on this fixed icon, press control key and select the four holes of the plate. Just to show you a different approach this time, we click apply button to confirm our selection. Now we have to find all the information needed to run the simulation. Let's right click on static structural and click solve. As we run the simulation, the status bar shows the progress of the simulation, where we could interrupt or stop the simulation. In addition, we can click on the messages option on the status bar to see important information such as error and warning messages. Click on solution information, the solver output worksheet shows us important information such as model summary, the convergence values, and error messages, if any. We can also switch the window to display force convergence, which again is very important to monitor the convergence of a non-linear model. Now the simulation has finished and we want to see some results, which are all defined under the solution branch of the tree outline. Right click on the solution, choose insert, stress, equivalent stress. Right click on the stress object and choose evaluate all results. Now we can see a nice contour plot of our stress. 
On the top results tab, we can modify the display settings, such as the deformation scale or the plot style. Down below, we have a history graph of the max, min, and average values from the contour plot and the accompanying tabular data. We can also control which frame we would like to show the contour plot and then even play an animation over the result sets. Finally, let's now make a section cut of the model to look inside, but how would we know where in Mechanical to find that or other such options? Let's use the quick launch, type in the word section, and we'll quickly find what we're looking for. Pick section plane, take me there. We're now shown exactly where we can find this option in the user interface. Pick section plane, draw a line to slice the model, and we can now see inside. So let's summarize. When setting up and solving analysis, we start at the top of the tree outline and work our way to the bottom, defining each of the objects. ANSYS mechanical user interface changes depending on what is selected in the tree outline, and this includes the context tab, the details, what's displayed in the graphics window, as well as the right mouse button menus, which is a quick and handy way to access various options. As you start to become more comfortable using the mechanical user interface, just remember that if you're ever lost, take a look at the tree outline and see what you've highlighted. You can jump around and click on another object on the tree outline to perform different operations or make changes to your model setup. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe. To find more information about the mechanical user interface or other topics, please check our channel for more how-to videos and visit ansys.com courses today.